Hi, I'm Marty Nemco, and this little short, short story is called The Life at the 40th Percentile. Johnny was average. Looks, personality, brains. He scored between the 30th and 50th percentile on most standardized tests, from his second grade reading and math achievement test to the SAT. Johnny went to community college, and three courses short of his associate's degree, dropped out in part because he had taken the required math course three times and couldn't pass it. He took a job at Evergreen Nursery, unpacking shipments, hauling soil to customers' cars, answering customers' questions, too often relying on the Sunset Garden book. After work, Johnny played schoolyard basketball or just vegged out, whether staring out at the window at drifting clouds or at the snow falling or cooking. He considers such activities as peeling potatoes or watching water come to a boil as meditative. Johnny got promoted to assistant manager with an increase in pay to fifteen twenty-five an hour. But Home Depot's, Lowe's, and Walmart's selection and prices trumped too many customers' desires to shop local, and so Evergreen Nursery, like many mom and pops, closed. Nervous, Johnny wanted a job fast, so he applied to Home Depot and was hired as an assistant manager in its nursery department at seventeen seventy-five an hour. Although his nearest Home Depot was just two miles from his apartment, the nearest one that had an opening was seven miles away. And with the ever-worsening traffic, it took him an hour each way. Mass transit would have taken him much longer still. As troubling, with the commuting expense, Johnny was now making even less net than at Evergreen. The good news was that the job was easier because he didn't have to fill in with delivery unloading or soil carrying when employees called in sick. There were forklifts, and if a worker in the nursery department wasn't there when a delivery arrived, the store manager would just reassign someone from another department. And for a few years, all proceeded reasonably well. Although Johnny's rent and other living expenses increased, he got small raises every six months and so remained sort of solvent. He was even able to replace his 30-year-old 19-inch Magnavox TV with a 55-inch Scepter that Walmart was selling for two seventy nine. He didn't even have to, as he usually did, pay it off in installments. He bought it for cash. On his 40th birthday, Johnny sat at his window, staring at the autumn leaves falling, <clears throat> and saw his future as just hanging on, and when the inevitable layoffs and then illness hit, there'd be no money for retirement, and he'd have to move to a welfare hotel and live on food stamps, and then probably die early because of an overwhelmed health care system. The U.S. alone has 150 million people at the 40th percentile, with an IQ of 90 or less. Meanwhile, the jobs that such people used to hold are being ever more automated, offshored, and converted into temp gigs. A McDonald's in Phoenix has already replaced clerks with kiosks and burger makers with robots. Amazon is only the most prominent of the retailers that are automating warehouse work. There are farms in Japan with no workers. The Tesla factory floor has lots of big manufacturing machines and few people, few workers. And the more benefits that government mandates, the more employee lawsuits, the faster that employers will replace U.S. workers. Stephen Pinker's Enlightenment Now is a hot book. Indeed, it's Bill Gates' favorite. It points out society's progress but it ignores important realities, like what's going to happen to the world's three billion Johnnies. Thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemko.